Okay, YouTube, so uh, I got the slide in here, got the garage warmed up, answered some questions on YouTube, and did some stuff there, and I got all my parts here. Now, the vast majority of my parts, my carb boots, crank seals, I only need one, but I got two, just in case I mess one up. Uh, clutch puller, which you'll need to do the uh, crank seals, and I needed a radiator hose, uh, which I actually struggled to find, but I got the bulk of my part, parts through MFG Supply. I got my, uh, let's see, I got my, nope, I got the carb boots, crank seals, and clutch puller through MFG Supply. And I got the radiator hose, which was a very hard to find part through an outfit that I found through my searching that if you guys are having troubles finding parts for any of your Articats, I'll show you what we got right there. Do a little plug. The easiest way that I found to get to them is store.articat.com, I think. But I'm sure you can find it that way too, countrycatarticat.com. Um, anyways, so, uh, we'll get to work. Uh, the first things first, we'll go on the, go ahead and do the carb boots. Those are probably the simplest, most straightforward thing to change. And then we'll move on to the uh, crank seal, which is a little bit more in-depth, but none of it's terribly hard. And it's actually pretty good maintenance to replace your rubbers, your rubber components on your sleds every once in a while. Just because rubber has a tendency to rot and fall apart, and you don't want to take a risk of uh, burning up your motor. Now, if you're not into spending money on maintenance, then I guess it's, in, uh, it's a full possibility that uh, you can just wait and look for the symptoms and signs and get it there. Personally, I don't like taking the chances, but I am... Um, going back on myself a little bit there because I knew what the problem with this was and I ran it anyways through the last season. So let's go ahead and get to work. So like I said, car boots are going to be pretty simple to replace. On my sled I don't have the air box on there anymore, which actually can become a bit of a problem, uh, especially if you're doing a lot of powder riding. What will happen is the snow will, as you're running through powder, will come up in and get into your carbs and you can freeze up your slides. and. Uh, end up with a stuck, a stuck throttle condition. We actually ran into a condition on one of Dean's skidoos last week where it had frozen up the needle jets and gave it a rich condition. We were fearing the worst for that sled, but uh, it looks like it'll be all right now. Um, so shouldn't have to, if you got the air box off, shouldn't have to unplug anything. Should be able to just uh, unscrew the clamps for the carbs and then push them down a little bit, break them loose, and then it's just as simple as getting a, uh, uh, I'll mention as a side note, try and keep your carbs upright, otherwise you'll empty the bowls out, but, uh, and then you'll, uh, yeah, then it's just a matter of two bolts on each, on each one. Some sleds, like this 600 that I was working on, some of them uh, have Allen heads, and this one just happens to have, uh, what I'm going to guess is uh, 13 millimeters. Um, or halves, either or. So we'll get a wrench and we'll take those off. Actually, turns out it looks more like a half or a 12. We're going to try a 12 first. Hey, 12 fits perfect. So should have known that 13 millimeters actually smaller than a half not bigger worked really well if you got stripped nuts and bolts and such because then you can if you got a nut or a bolt head that's a little bit stripped you can take a 13 millimeter and tap it onto the head and a lot of times you can get enough purchase on it to get it out and replace the nut or bolt in question so Go like this. Looks like this one has studs, which I don't necessarily like, but hey, it works. So I just want to get behind it and pull this car boot off. Now you'll find sometimes you'll find a gasket behind these. Sometimes they're O-ringed. Um, it's looking. 
in this case, like I've got a gasket, but we'll find out a little bit more here in a, here in a second. Yep, they still have an O-ring. You'll see that O-ring right there that goes into there. I'll see how the new carbs look, but uh, yeah, it doesn't look like there's a gasket, I guess. So, O-rings it is, which O-rings are nice. You just press them into that groove, and uh, away you go. Make sure you get all of your washers off of there, because they'll squish into the rubber. And... Uh, you can take a look at them. You can look inside, see if you got any cracking. I see that I, I definitely do have some cracking going on there, uh, some dry rotting and such, which isn't terribly surprising since this sled, before I got it, sat for quite a while. Okay, so we got the other one unbolted, and we'll get behind it, and you want to be careful if you put a bar or anything behind there, you don't want to gouge this aluminum at all, it'll gouge really easy, and uh, that can cause a problem as far as getting it to seal up, but in this particular case, because I'm having such troubles with it, I am going to use one. And we'll just use a straight screwdriver, and we're going to carefully put it behind there, being careful not to gouge the metal. We'll get it real close to the stud and we'll push the stud or push the carb boot off the stud like so. And we can get behind this one. We don't want to muck up that coolant hose though. I already gotta replace one coolant hose. And let me tell you those coolant hoses, you wouldn't think that it would be so hard to find, but man alive, finding a factory fit coolant hose is just a bugger. Okay, and there we go. So, I'm going to take our new carb boots and uh, we'll go ahead and get them put on. Hello. Hello. Kayla's here. She's been a little bit sick lately, so nobody breathe in too deeply. We don't want to get it. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll just put this car boot on just like the old one came off. Um, looks like there actually isn't any O-rings, so I'm not sure how that really seals up unless it just goes inside of that, that groove there. I mean, it's rubber, obviously it's going to seal, but uh, I don't think I'm comfortable putting any sealant on the back side. But when we get all said and done, we'll make sure that we got it sealed with the ether, the same thing that we did to, uh, to check it out in the first place. Verify the fix, I guess you could say. Well, and make sure all of your clamps are pointed the right direction so they're easy to get to. Put your flat washers back on. And then uh, lock washers and nuts, just like that.
Okay, so we got those uh, nuts back on there. We're gonna tighten them up. Now, I don't really have this under any particular authority, but me personally, I would not just crank the ever-loving bejeevers out of these. Uh, most of the reason being that I'm, I would be afraid that if I just cranked them up that I would warp the rubber and uh, cup it up in the middle where the port is, so, which is gonna cause a point to leak. So get them up there, get them snug, and uh, you know, the rubber rubber is pretty pliable, so it should, it should seal up decent, as long as you're doing it right. So, there we go, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Tighten up this other one, put the carbs on, and then we'll get onto the crank seal. We got those on, we'll put our clamps back in here and uh, get the carbs in. Now the carbs are going to have a little bit of a groove where they kind of pop in and you'll feel them as they go. So you want to make sure that they get in there and then square them up. Make sure you get them up there straight so that the bowls aren't, aren't tipped to the side or anything. Just like so. And we'll just tighten up the clamps and we're ready to go on to the next part. Breaking the law, breaking the law. 